M0FXB Ham Tech, welcome to my videos on the Uniden STS 100 200 waterfall that cover a user selectable span or band of the radio spectrum to show you graphically the radio transmissions that are present. The waterfall feature quickly shows you how active a span or band of the spectrum is. When you see a transmission displayed, you can navigate to listen to it. To get this feature, you have to update the firmware on your devices and the one I've got is 2.5.03. The links will be in the description. Then you navigate over to the Uniden Purchase Upgrade site and you just pay £20 in the UK for an upgrade key, which is very easy to, to add. You just go to your menu, then down to settings, enter with the silver button and then go to upgrade and then you go upgrade waterfall and you have to enter the key here. And you do need to put the flat lines in as well. You don't use the keypad, you scroll the numbers using the silver knob and then press enter and to back out. And you can actually set a shortcut for the waterfall, which I have done if we go to scan here and I press the hold button first and then number one, you can set a shortcut key. Let's do that again, hold. You've got to remember to press the hold and then the F button. So hold, then F, then one. And we'll go, oh, we've got a close call now there. They are straight to the waterfall. So close call, as you can see, still works. And it actually took me to the frequency that was, you know, that was busy on the scan section. You press scan to go back and hey presto. And I can even press enter and save that as a memory. The other way to start the waterfall is you just press the menu, go up, up three clicks, backwards three clicks, press enter, and it just starts. And with the SDS, very similar. So there's your menu at the side, back three clicks, and then just press the enter. And, that, and yes, you can set the, the shortcut buttons on the search one, two, or three uh, in exactly the same way. And I'll, I'll actually show you that on here. You just go menu. Go to search for, enter. Go to set search key, enter. Enter again when you choose which of the three keys you would like to use. Press enter. And look, you can go up and down. You can, you can actually select other, many other items, but one of them is waterfall. Enter, and then you've done it. And then you can back out like so all the way. And then you would just press the F, well, hold it first. The F and then the one. Again, I keep pressing the wrong button. Try again. F one. There you go. Into that. And I've noticed I've I've got the grid filled there with a colour which you can select that colour. But on this one, on the two hundred, I haven't. I think it looks better without it. I'm pretty sure I can change the colour of the line, and that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. One thing I like about the menu is, if you go menu, up three clicks, enter. I like the fact that you can use preset waterfall. So let's just start preset waterfall, enter. And look, look at all these different ones you can choose. So if you wanna make sure you're in the right mode when you're searching, choose a you know one of these, and you can preset them, of course, that is gonna be in the mode that you like. So if we're gonna do ham radio, Press enter and it goes straight there and it's already in FM. And you can see the span can be selected by pressing the span button. There's a 360 kilohertz span, 720, one, and then you get very small 2.88. So I'm finding it working great on 360 kilohertz and you can hear the audio as well. You can hold it as well, you can freeze things and then you've got the back to sweeping and you're back to scan. But if you press the mode button here, or should I say the function button, you get step, you can change the step. Oops, go back to the thing. Let's hold and then press F1. So if you press F, you can change the step here. I'm not going fast enough, am I? <laughs> Let's do that again. So F1. No, hold first, then F1. Okay. Press it and then step and it look, it shows it on the screen. Step. If you're quick, you can just cycle through. And then you've got max hold as well. 
and that's let's push that again max hold we'll look at that menu as well because you can set the time on max hold mf to cf i definitely need to know what that is because i haven't seen that in the manual yet but i'm sure it'll turn up the other one is the, with the gain, with the, if you look here on the, the actual display of this, you're seeing the span you've selected, the frequency you're on, the gain which is set to auto, the volume and the squelch, which is nice to see that on the screen, and the volume. But you can set the gain yourself if you just press the function then zero. Look, you can turn the silver knob yourself. Like so, and all of these functions that I'm talking about, you can do on the STS 100. Yes, the function button is the top green button, and the back button, or this button here, is the red button. But otherwise, everything is set exactly the same. And you know, someone, some people say, well, which would you get, the walkie-talkie or the base station? Well, it's it's a tough one because you can take this anywhere. You do need, do need to make sure you fully charge the battery and take, I would say, take a battery bank with you because the batteries and the separate battery chargers are literally like, you know, £150 to get to the UK. In America, I think you can get them for about 80 90 which is way better. Um, so a battery bank and then even a USB adapter that takes you from this USB here, as you can see, to USB-C is a, is a, I recommend that, and that's what I use. So I can pretty much take it anywhere, plug it into my uh, five volts USB-C cable, and then with my adapter, I can take it anywhere. And as I said earlier, to save a memory channel, just press enter. So let's explore some of these menus. We'll go to menu, then up to waterfall, press the silver. And we've seen the preset, which I like, the custom waterfall. So you can make a custom waterfall by program WF custom ban. Let's press enter. And then you can choose one and you can customize it. We'll go enter. You can give it a name, a center frequency, a mode, step and span. So you can do all that. And then you can start a custom one as well, pressing enter. We've just seen this. Choose the one you want to start. You would have named it. You would have known and have an idea because you've named it what it is and you can use that. You can edit what's on the screen now. So press enter, go down to edit, press enter. And we can say we're in the wrong modulation. So we just go enter and where it's in auto now, we can tune, you know, choose a different mode. And go back. You can change the step as well. Set the FFT display. Let's go enter. Now this is the size of what you're seeing on screen. So if we choose, go to the right far extreme, 100% and go enter, then back out, go back to the, the waterfall. Okay, see what it's done? You're just seeing the spectrum now. So we've gone the full other extreme. If we go menu, Back three, I'm finding. Enter and go to the same thing. Enter and set it to 50 50, which is the one we like. I think I like. Then back out completely. You're going to get the waterfall. So let's look at the next menu. Go menu. So this time we're going to go to FFT type. Enter. And we've got line or bar. So when it's on line, let's have a look. We, we'll just, well, we'll actually, we'll move it to bar and we'll go enter. Then we'll back out. And what's happened is the color in the bar is now, you know, in the sh shaky bit, is now like a white color and it's filled. It's not before it was almost transparent, wasn't it? So let's, we, I'm pretty sure we can change that color, but let's go like so. Back to waterfall, same, same one, enter, go back to line, enter, we back out, we've gone transparent. So I'm going to go back in by pressing menu, waterfall, enter, and you can use E or the silver button, and we'll do max hold. Now I like max hold, so we'll go enter, 
turn it on, enter, and we back out. What we're going to start seeing is when transmissions are, there's going to, it's going to be held, yeah, the the last sort of received frequency, give you an idea of what was there before. And you can set the time on that. So if you go menu, down again, back to, and uh, you can do set max hold time. And it says infinite, I don't like that. We just need about three seconds. So we'll go enter, back out again. And then after three seconds, that will change the max hold. We'll go menu again. Waterfall, Let's keep going down. Set a marker, I've not used that yet. So we'll go enter. Marker position, set marker width. We'll just go enter. Position adjustable or fixed in the center screen. Okay, back. Let's do that again. Enter, set marker width, enter. And it's on wide. Let's go def default, shall we? It's on wide at the moment. We'll go default and to see if we can see uh, anything obvious. There's our marker. And to speed up the marker, you can press, before you turn, you can press the F and then it turns faster. Apparently, that's what I just read. Depending on what your step's already set at, remember our step button here. Okay, press it, apparently, apparently it's wider when you press the F button. So according to the manual, manual, the MFCF is what it says, moves the marker and frequency being received to the centre frequency of the display. It also says that when the span is at 2.88, you have to press the hold button to hear anything. But... I'm not getting that. It says here at span size setting above 2.88, the scanner cannot receive. So above, let's go again. There you are. But there it is. So above. But what you can do, you can press the hold. Back to sweep. But I'm finding that if I go to 360, I can hear anyway. So I always leave it on that. Let's try 720, 1.44. 2.88 is only 5.6, 8.64, 17 that does the silent thing. And like I said, with the RF gain, you literally just go F0 and then you adjust it here, look. Which I think would be quite nice because it will bring in all the colours rather than the auto. But we'll play with that. And it does, there's a timeout, things do default. So with the marker, let's go menu, uh, up to three, water four, and we'll go to the marker. Marker position is, is adjustable. If we go fixed to the center, let's do that. And then back out. So yeah, I can see how you've got a marker here in the center and you can move this back and forth. Now, when it comes to setting color, this is what the manual says. Customize the colors used to depict signal strength ranges in the waterfall display. Customize the marker color, see a demo of what you've changed and reset the waterfall display. So I think that's handy, so let's do it. We'll go menu, up three, waterfall, and then we're gonna go set color. And we've got a quite a, a bigger menu than we're seeing in the instruction manual, so maybe there's some additions. So, well, we do, I do like the, the demo screen to see what we're currently selecting. I'm just telling you what you're currently selecting. Press any key to return. Look at that. Yes. Excellent. So, let's go, and we know we can reset it. Let's do set, set uh, marker color. And at the moment, you get the usual color changing grid that we've seen in the past. So at the moment, it actually says the color here. It even gives us the color number. I like that. So just to be different, let's go. Let's do, we were on green, I think. Let's do the just for now. We'll do light blue, and then we'll back out. 
It doesn't look like it's changed to me. Still looks green to me. Did I not save? Menu, waterfall, set mark color. No, that's the wrong one. Enter. Set mark color, enter. Yeah, it's still on green. So let's go to blue and then press enter this time. We can look at demo actually, can't we? Demo, ah look, it's gone blue there. Look at that, I like that. So if we back out all the way, that's gonna be fine. We've now got a blue line here that we can move. Okay. One that you can really play with is go menu, color, and that is, look, set WF level one weak and strong. So if we go enter on the strong one, I knew it would be red, it is red. I like that there, so let's go back one. So level four, so each level has a color. We'll go enter, and they've done that at yellow. I like that, I don't see any point of changing that. Set water for level three, enter, and they've gone for a gray. So instead of having a gray, let's do a, let's do a nice light green. Okay, enter. Don't forget, we can default this. Right, number two, enter, is the blue. I think I'm all right with that. And number one for the really weak signals, enter, is black. Hmm. wonder why they've gone for the black. So let's just to really be different, let's choose white, enter. We'll back out. Remember, we can do defaults. We can actually demo it, can't we? All right, it really does change it. Oh well, I'm going to leave it as that so you can see how much you can change it. Yeah, and I don't really like that. So we go menu, waterfall, set color, reset to defaults, enter, then we back out. Back to, yeah, so the default settings, I think, are really good as they are. I don't actually feel like they need changing. So I think that's enough. You know, just the menus on the SDS. Just remember, just menu, the red button, three back, waterfall, and then look, they're all there. You know, they're all there. Uh, just both. They're both excellent. The base station is about, in the UK, is about £750. The handheld is about £650. So it's a real tough choice, but you get, I think, you get a lot more radio when you buy the base station one. So if you're mainly or nearly always going to be sat in your shack, also the battery is not going to last long with a full colour screen. So that's quite annoying. Okay, you can just plug in a cable in the side and it's like a base station then and that, that works fine. But I, I think you, you're getting way more, you know, you plug in your, I've got it here, my cable plugged in, powering it. There's two actual power connectors on the back. So I get some light on that, let's see. You've got micro USB here. I've actually, I've, you know, I've never tested that to see what it does. I'll try that in a minute. Um, otherwise, you've got the, uh, this quite chunky power lead that's in the box. I think it does come with a cigarette lighter adapter. I mean, I don't trust these DC. They, they tend to break, don't they? GPS module that plugs into that. Uh, so I'm just trying to work out, is it beneficial to have a GPS module? I think there is a GPS module that plugs into this as well. And um, let me just plug in a micro USB into that and just see if it detects anything. So BNC, external speaker, sounds great. I, mean, I think it's a fantastic device. Yes, it's, you know, it's, it's not a cheap scanner. It's definitely one of the best looking scanners on the market. And I've plugged that in and we are getting a, a compo. Of course, I've got my, adapt, my USB-C adapter there. So we are getting a COM port on my PC. Now, ProScan have got some software that does detect the waterfall, which you can make full screen. So have ARC. And the nice thing is you can fully control the scanner and you can change the frequency just clicking your mouse on your PC. And the ARC is very good as well. That's your ARC and you've got full control there as well. And that's the ARC 536 Pro. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Excellent. And these, these, these scanners are just fantastic. Bye for now.